Welcome to ECE's View 2. This is Lecture 1.2 on Approximations. I am Professor Stanley Chan. So, uh, last time we looked at Section 1.1, uh, where we talk about infinite series. In particular, we talk about geometric series and binomial series. And in this lecture, we're going to learn something also very useful that we used when we talk about continuous random variables. Uh, this is uh, what we call the approximations. Uh, and here we will introduce uh, three concepts. One is the uh, Taylor approximation, and then we have the exponential series, and finally we will talk about the logarithmic approximation. Again, these are some of the things that many of you have learned in the freshman and sophomore calculus. And so uh, I would rather treat it as a review of uh, these concepts. So let's start by talking about the Taylor approximation. So I'm going to use this notation to define a function. So whenever I have a function f, I will write it as a function from one place to another place. And this notation r means it will be the, um, the real interval, okay, any real number. So it's going to send a real number to another real number. That's what we call a function. And this function is a continuous function, and I assume that it has uh, infinite derivatives. That means you can take derivatives as many times as you want. And I'm going to define a fixed constant, I call it a. a is also a real number. And then I define the Taylor approximation of function f at x equals to a as the following expression. So you have fx, I will write it as fa, okay, so that would be a a function evaluated at any uh, position x, and this position x is close to a, and I can approximate it by uh, f a, and then here you have f prime a, so that's the derivative of f evaluated at a, and then you have this uh, uh, a small perturbation x minus a, then you have uh, this um, uh, second order term, which is the second order derivative divided by two factorial, and then you have this um, a deviation square and so on. So if you want to have a summation notation, then you can write it as this. Okay. Uh, basically, for any function f, you can write it using the Taylor approximation. That depends on how many orders that you want to keep. So this expression here is a little bit complicated, and I understand that. Um, however, we can understand these uh, using some examples. Uh, here is the first example. Let's try to find the Taylor approximation of function fx equals to sine x and x equals to zero. Then, uh, according to the Taylor expansion, I can write it as uh, fx equals to f zero plus the first order derivative evaluated at zero times uh, this deviation, and then I have f double prime at zero divided by two factorial, and then you have uh, x minus zero square. This is the third order term, and you can have many other terms. Okay, and then now you can evaluate this f at zero. So basically, just put x equals to zero into your sine function. Okay, so therefore you have sine at zero. The derivative f prime, which is the derivative of the sine function, will give you cosine function. And then you put uh, x equals to 0, so you have cosine 0. And then you have x minus 0. The second order derivative of a sine is minus sine. Uh, so that will give you minus sine at 0. And then you have 2 factorial. And then you just keep doing that, you will have all these expressions. And you notice that sine 0 is 0. Uh, and so you can cancel all these terms and cosine 0 is 1. Okay, so all these cosine 0 that will give you 1 and therefore you will end up having this fx approximately equal to x minus x cubed to the x to the power 3 divided by 6. Uh, and so if you want to expand it to higher order terms, then you can see that the sine function can be expressed as this infinite uh, series. Okay, so this is what we call the Taylor approximation of a function. Uh, here is a diagram illustrating the idea of this Taylor approximation. Uh, so uh, the blue line is the uh, sine function that we are looking at. Okay, so this is the sine function. Now, uh, if I take the third order um, uh, approximation, 
then I will have uh, I will have this function here, so, right? So that would be this function. Okay, so you can see that I am trying to approximate uh, my function at x equals to zero. So for any small deviation, uh, slightly away from x zero, using a third order polynomial, I will be able to approximate that fairly well. However, if I want to travel farther away, then uh, according to this diagram, I need to use higher order polynomials. For example, uh, if I'm looking at a seventh order polynomial, then I'm actually looking at this curve. And you can see that it's, it's a good approximation for the wider range of x. Okay, so that's the idea of the uh, Taylor approximation. Now, I want to remind you that this Taylor approximation is really depending on where you are approximating at. And here is the example where we're trying to do the same thing for sine function, uh, but we are now looking at the approximation at x equals to a half. Okay, so without going to this uh, calculation, let me point you to the diagram. It's the same sine function, nothing different from before. However, here, I'm trying to approximate at uh, one half. So this is one half. And so now if I use the third order polynomial, fifth order, seventh order polynomial, I do a much better fitting at points that are near uh, a half. And it will become worse when I'm looking at points, for example, at x equals to zero or at other locations of the x. So if we go back to this uh, equations, you can see that I can, I'm just basically applying the same definition of my Taylor approximation. Uh, I look at the zero order, first order, second order, third order terms, and then now, now I need to substitute pi over two uh, instead of, uh, of zero. Uh, by the way, this is, should be uh, pi over two instead of uh, one half. Okay, so now I need to put in this pi over two uh, into all these calculations, then you can show. Then you can see that this f x can be re, uh, approximately written as this one minus one fourth times x minus pi over two square. Okay, so that would be this expression. Again, this is not uh, one half, but um, pi over two. Okay, so this is the Taylor approximation. Now we can use the idea of Taylor approximation to do something also very useful. Uh, we will talk about the exponential series. So what is exponential series? Exponential series is an infinite series that, uh, that is a Taylor approximation of e to the power x. And the expression is given by 1 uh, plus x plus x squared divided by 2 and so on. Uh, and if you want a summation notation, then you have this. Now how do we prove that? Uh, there's no dirty secret behind. You just apply this Taylor approximation to this function uh, f x equals to e to the power x, and then you substitute uh, x equals to zero into all these terms, and then you expand the terms. Then you have um, this expression, which is the summation of x to the power k divided by k factorial. So you ask, when do we need to use this exponential series? Well, we need to use this exponential series when we go to chapter 3, when we talk about Poisson random variables. So let, let's look at one example. This is the uh, infinite series for a uh, exponential-like uh, expression. So here we are looking at summation k equals to 0 going to infinity, and then lambda to the power k, e minus lambda divided by k factorial. So here lambda is just some constants which uh, you are given. Uh, so you can put lambda equals to a half, or lambda equals to one, it would just be some constant. And we want to evaluate this expression. Now, uh, without doing anything, we notice that this is a summation over the case, and this e to the power lambda has nothing to do with the case, we can pull it out. So you have e to the power minus lambda, and then here you have summation k going from zero to infinity, and then you have lambda to the power k divided by k factorial. Uh, so what is this? Well, you go back a little bit, you realize that this is really the summation going from 0 to infinity, x to the power k divided by k factorial. We replace x by lambda, okay? And therefore, what this is going to give you is e to the power lambda. And so now these two terms, they will cancel out, and so you have obtained the result, which is uh, 1. Okay, So this infinite sum is actually equal to 1. And again, this is a very useful result. In the, in the chapter 3, when we talk about Poisson random variables. 
Let's look at another example. Uh, here, let's try to substitute x equals to j theta, where j is the square root of minus 1. And we want to use the Taylor approximation to find uh, the sine and the cosine by using this exponential series result. OK, so the exponential series result says that e to the power x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot dot dot. Now, if you substitute uh, uh, x equals to uh, j theta, uh, then here you will get 1 plus uh, j theta plus j theta. Uh, and then j theta, uh, you have a square, and then you have cube, and so on. OK, and then now you ask, what is uh, j theta squared? Uh, j theta squared uh, is minus uh, theta squared. And then j theta cube is minus j theta cube. OK, so now you can group these terms together. So you have, um, oh, by the way, I'm missing all the two and then three factorials and so on. OK, so this is one factorial. Uh, this is two factorial. This is three factorial. OK, uh, so uh, if you write down uh, all these terms, then you can see that this is, uh, uh, you can group all the real terms together. So theta squared divided by 2 factorial, and, and so on. OK, and then now you have all these uh, imaginary terms, which is j, uh, theta to the 1 factorial uh, minus uh, theta cube uh, to the 3 factorial, and so on. OK, so here this is all the real terms, and these are all the imaginary terms. And now, uh, recall that this e to the power j theta is really cosine theta plus j sine theta. So now you can match the real term with the cosine term, and then the imaginary term with the sine term. And so you can see that um, uh, this is um, and uh, thus, it, uh, the the cosine theta can be expressed as one minus theta squared divided by two factorial, and so on. So that would give you an infinite series. The sine theta will give you another infinite series. So finally, let's look at one more example, uh, or the extension of the Taylor approximation. This is called the logarithmic approximation. The logarithmic approximation uh, has many forms, and I'm only showing you one form. Uh, it is that uh, if you have uh, 1 plus x, if you take the log outside, you can approximately write it as x minus x squared plus some high order terms involving x cubed. So how do you do that? Well, uh, you, you, you start with this function fx, you write it as uh, log of 1 plus x, and then uh, you take the derivative of this function. The first derivative will give you this term, the second derivative will give you that term. And then you, if you do the Taylor approximation at x equals to 0, then you have this fx equals to f0, f prime 0, f double prime 0, and so on. Plug this number in, then you'll be able to obtain this expression. Okay? So basically, uh, this is the log of uh, 1 plus x. And you can approximate it, write it as x minus x squared for uh, any x that is small. Now, this result would be very useful when we talk about central limit theorem when we go to chapter 6 of our course. So here is one uh, application of the, the result. Uh, we want to calculate this uh, um, uh, limit of uh, 1 plus s squared divided by 2n to the power n. And we want to show that this is going to equal to uh, e to the power s squared. So how do we do that? Um, we can uh, consider this term n uh, log of 1 plus s squared divided by 2 uh, n. Okay, so we can consider this term. And um, according to the previous uh, 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 theorem, we know that a log of 1 plus x is approximately equal to x. Uh, let me see, is it minus or plus? So it's a minus. So you have minus x squared. Okay, so now we ask, what, what is 1? Well, this is, of course, 1. And then what is x? This is your x. Okay, so now you have uh, equals to n plus uh, log. Uh, now this log can be approximated by uh, uh, this expression, which is uh, s squared divided by 2n minus 
s squared by uh, 2n, uh, this entire thing uh, square. <coughs> okay, so here is the uh, expression. And then we can expand this term out. So now you have uh, n times uh, s uh, squared divided by 2n uh, minus s to the power 4 divided by 4n squared. And then now uh, we can, we can uh, apply the n into this calculation. Then you have s squared divided by 2 minus s4 divided by 4n. Okay. And then now we can apply the limit of n going to infinity of this term. Then you can show that uh, as n goes to infinity, this term will go away to 0. Then you have s squared divided by 2. And therefore, uh, if you take the, um, uh, if you take the uh, exponential term here, then you have e to the power um, n times log of 1 plus s squared divided by, n, by 2n. This is approximately equal to e to the power s squared divided by 2. Okay, So we have shown that um, this limit term is actually equal to this e to the power s squared divided by 2. So again, this will be used when we talk about central limit theorem in chapter 6. So this summarizes uh, this part of the lecture. Uh, I hope you have uh, find this interesting. Uh, if you have any question, uh, please feel free to post on Piazza or send us an email. Thank you.